Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Deadlings for the Nintendo Switch. As you can probably pretty easily tell, Deadlings is a mobile port over to the Switch, but it's also a game that maybe I didn't give enough credit to when I initially sat down to play it. Reading through the eShop's description, the story and player motivations are pretty darn light, so I didn't really have a high expectation for the game. More or less, Death himself is bored, so in order to fill his free time, or maybe make some friends or something, he creates deadlings and runs them through a factory to hone his deadling army. And in all honesty, I don't really understand what the story is or what the player motivations are, but moving on to the actual gameplay, it's not really that bad for a casual puzzle platformer. More or less, you'll have a palette of deadlings, or little dead critter zombies with individual abilities, and you'll gain more as you play through the levels, but each one will have a special ability that'll help you navigate through this trap-filled labyrinth maze. Some of your deadlings will only be able to run, while other ones can crawl and stick to walls, other ones can fly based on their own gaseous issues, and still others will be moved and be able to be used more as paperweights to hold down buttons. But either way, regardless of which ones you're playing with, the deadlings will be used for their specific purposes to achieve goals in the maze to eventually let one of the deadlings make it to that final exit door. Overall, there are about 70 levels in the Nintendo Switch version, with 15 levels per chapter for the actual four gaming chapters, and 10 games left over kind of as bonus. Each of these levels has a three-star system, as you would expect from most casual mobile games, one for completing the level, the other for completing the level in a certain amount of time, and the final star for being able to complete the level, gaining all of the little collectible brains. These brains, though, will be scattered all around the level, and particularly close to certain traps, so sometimes it might be better to collect all the brains, or sometimes it might be better to leave some alone in order to get the star for the time. But that being said, as these stars used to contribute to the game's mobile in-game currency of skulls allowing you to kind of buy out certain levels or even remove certain traps, on the Nintendo Switch version of the game, thankfully there's no in-game currency or in-game purchases, so getting the stars for completion is more just going to be a personal choice. As you complete each level, though, obviously the traps are going to get more and more intricate, and the further that you get into the game, the more of these little deadling types you're going to unlock. The entire first chapter will give you the first three deadlings, which are the runner, the sticky one, and the one that uses its gas power to fly, and just as soon as you get to the introductory levels of the second chapter is where you'll get more of your paperweight or your sleepy zombie. And at this point is where the puzzles and traps start to get interesting. Prior to getting your paperweight zombie, most of the traps were just about avoidance, but the addition of the force zombie makes it to where you really need to pay attention to where your zombies are, which buttons are pressed in which order, and how to navigate the map as a whole, as opposed to navigating it as a single gauntlet for a single character. Thankfully though, this is where even as a mobile port, the game kinda shines. The developers chose to divide each of the levels into two main phases. As soon as you're introduced to a new level, you'll be able to zoom in, zoom out, pan all around the screen, and get an idea of what to do or how to tackle the situation before your timer starts. As soon as you open the doors and release your first zombie minion though, this is where the timer starts and you're committed more to that action phase. But like I said, after you unlock a slew of minions to work with, the game does get decidedly more complicated and divides even the action phase into two different sections. At certain phases of the game, you'll actually have to interrupt your own progression to shift back and forth between multiple different deadlings on the map, to make sure that you're accessing different trigger points, pressing buttons, and opening gates in the right order to make sure that at least one of your minions can make it to that final gate. Other than that, there will be an initial learning curve for the player, not just in figuring out how to conquer each level, but how to use the game's controls. The A button will make the runner minion jump, the A button will make the flying minion fly, and so on and so forth for every single minion you manage to unlock. Zooming in and zooming out, also in the planning stages of the game, use some of the same buttons as you use to select or choose between your minions. And after about level 15 or so, you'll really need to get a handle on how to pause your progression in the action phase to swap between minions to control multiple characters at once. And while the button combinations that the developer chose to assign for the Switch port over are effective, they're not necessarily intuitive, and that might be a bit of a frustration for a player, at least in those initial levels. The graphics and the audio in the game are really well rendered and pretty high quality, but again, if you are more of a console gamer, it's gonna be hard to break that mindset of feeling like you're still playing a mobile game. 
If you were going to sit down and marathon it, it probably wouldn't take you much more than a couple hours, depending on your platforming skills. So while it is a fairly entertaining puzzle platformer, it's definitely meant to be more casual to draw out the actual duration of the gameplay. So if you are a fan of casual gaming, if you're a fan of puzzle games, or if you're a fan of kind of quick platformers like maybe something like Awesome P that requires a lot of trial and error to figure out how to complete the level, depending on your personal comfort with the price point, it might be a game that you'd be willing to try out. But if you're the gamer that actually wants a story or anything that builds up to a final crescendo, or if you're the kind of fan that really enjoys developing a character through some really hardcore platforming, Deadlings may not exactly be your cup of tea. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Deadlings now on the Nintendo Switch, so if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be some new game to find out about right here. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamer, so as always, thanks for watching.